Grappledaki was published for the first time in 1991, which means that the majority of the people watching this video were either too young or simply not born when this masterpiece hit. The good news is that a manga or anime can be consumed by anyone at any time, regardless of the number of years separating you from the original release date of the fiction in question. The same can be said for any piece of media, but I think it is particularly important when it comes to Japanese productions slash publications, considering how important hype is for the medium. There is indeed a particular draw towards new or otherwise extremely popular series, and while this helps the hobby become more mainstream, it also means that all the work gets lost in the shadows, never to reach the eyes of the public again. This isn't really the case for the Baki Saga as a whole, which is a highly popular and celebrated martial arts series, and has been on the rise with Western audiences ever since Netflix picked it up as their new animation project in 2018. However, this adaptation only concerned the series called Baki, and not the original story known as Baki the Grappler in North America. This is a shame, because it means that a lot of people skipped straight to the latest seasons, without getting to experience the greatness of their predecessor. And considering that the first 42 volumes of Baki contain all the plot elements necessary to understand the story, it is safe to say that the arcs that follow lose a lot of their narrative meaning when consumed in isolation. But that's not all. You see, I'm of the firm opinion that the beginning of Grappler Baki is actually the best part of the saga. Of course, the anime looks a little dated and the drawings of the manga aren't as refined, but it possesses a charm and aura of authenticity that the rest of the series has never managed to replicate, however good it might otherwise be. On top of that, it has the highest concentration of MPP, or motivation per page, of any martial arts series out there. For that reason alone, it is my duty as a weeb and bodybuilding enthusiast to convince you to give it a shot. And this is why in this video, I'm going to explain to you why reading slash watching Rapper Baki will make you want to get jacked. First off, let's state the obvious. Every single character is buff. If a guy stays in the frame slash panel for more than just a second, you can put money on the fact that he's gonna be humongous. The visual identity of Baki stipulates that any man who wishes to be part of the plot needs to have twice the muscle mass of the average human male. As a result, everyone is built like a bodybuilder, and you can't spend two minutes or turn a page without getting assaulted by a ripped six-pack or bulging biceps. In summary, the show will be bombarding you non-stop with top-tier physiques, constantly reminding you that you can, and should, be striving for a better body yourself. Kids are no exception, and it's not unusual for middle schoolers to look like they've been cycling tests ever since they were six. Seriously, look at this guy. His traps are so big that it's like they're trying to consume his head, which would be karmic justice considering that he seems like the type of dude to steal your lunch money for his 10th post-workout meal of the day. I can only count myself lucky that the bullies at my school weren't as big or else I would have never survived 6th grade. Overall, the physique of your average grappler backy protagonist is characterized by ridiculously thick upper backs and necks, with tree trunk legs also being the norm. The cantaloupe sized calves weren't really a staple yet in this season, although they did start to make their apparition during the maximum tournament arc. Another marking quirk of Itagaki's drawing is the well defined jaw muscles he gives some of his characters, Jack and Yujiro being prime examples. Speaking of the former, you'd have a hard time finding a more impressive mix of leanness and size in the cast, which is fitting considering he's the strongest creature on earth. Yes, you heard me right, this man represents the literal apex of human evolution, a fighter so dominant that no other living being or army can take him down. That's the level of outrageousness we're talking about here. He can also make people shit their pants with a single look, but that's true for most of the cast. A big part of the appeal of the show resides in seeing these superhumans interact with their environment, as they behave more like natural disasters than actual people. Life in the Bakiverse is a battle, so you better give your balls a good tug when you step out of bed every day, because you're going to need a solid pair to get through in one piece. Apply this attitude yourself, and you'll be unstoppable. And scary. While society as a whole isn't only constituted of giga chads, 
the martial artists whose story we follow are all incredibly muscular, save for a few exceptions. This can be a little bit deceiving since size rarely equals strength in terms of power rankings, but doesn't change the fact that this constant exposition to superior physiques participates in making grappler baki so inspiring. You'd be hard pressed to find a better example of male power fantasy, considering every other page has you either staring at some dude's gigantic traps or offers close ups of a chest and abs power pose. Itagaki plays up this trope as much as possible, so get used to stare at some perfectly scorted quads and glutes, because his storyboards are full of them. Geezers also fall into the basket of the inappropriately muscular like old boy over here boasting arms bigger than my 401k will ever be. Itagaki took the saying, age is just a number, and ran with it, as there is absolutely no limitation to how you can look in the back of us, regardless of how old you might be. Some of the cast is made up of men in their 50s that are still jacked out of their minds, which is a great message to convey to aspiring lifters. No matter how fit you think you might be, there will always be a backy character twice your age who will outsize you. And for the boomers out there, that should be an excellent motivation to get off your ancient ass and give those decrepit muscles a tune-up. Itagaki is telling you that a buff body is a better body, and I approve this message. This rule of thumb also extends to the protagonists, and a big part of the experience consists of following Baki's evolution as he grows bigger and stronger with the years. His transformation admittedly gets a little out of hand in later arcs, as the art style of the manga becomes more and more grotesque, with the characters turning into abominations of fleshy muscles, but it stays relatively realistic in the opening of the series. And regardless of if the main character's physiques are achievable or not, you can still get inspired by them. After all, you're reading a fiction, and what truly matters isn't necessarily how they look, but the motivations that led them to becoming so huge. Speaking about motivation, I have to carve out some time to talk to you about Jack, Baki's older brother. He single-handedly represents all the insanity that defines Grappler Baki, and is the only character in the story to do steroids. Stuck in a skinny body and incapable of getting results from his training due to his impatience, he decided to forfeit his life in order to achieve his dream, defeating the strongest creature on earth. And the least I can say is that he didn't go about it with kids' gloves on. His story alone is worth the watch, and I could cite a dozen examples that would instantly sell this show to you, if I weren't so afraid of spoiling your fun. Just know this. The man known as Jack will make you both cry and shiver. The life pursuits of these men, who each represent their own branch of martial arts, is to become the strongest. To achieve that goal, they are willing to put in every ounce of hard work necessary, and never back off from a fight. This is the level of sacrifice needed to achieve greatness, and the main theme that Itagaki seeks to represent through his work. As your existence really boils down to a game of influence, willingly exposing yourself on a daily basis to the biography of alpha males battling it out to decide who's the baddest of them all is the best possible decision you could make. There is a meme about how reading Grappler Baki raises testosterone. As you go through it, you come to discover that this is more than just a silly joke. It is a scientific reality that you will feel in your bones. Any panel or sequence of Baki training to become stronger will make you want to start doing push-ups. And it's impossible to sit still during one of the many Homeric battle sequences that punctuate the story. Setting aside how accurate Itagaki's rendering of movements and the flawless representation he makes of human anatomy, the fights by themselves justify putting in the time to experience the series. As overused as the term might seem, the best way to describe them is epic. There is a reason why people still talk about the Baki vs Jack fight more than 20 years after it was released. There are segments in this manga slash anime that will mark you for life. I also feel obligated to talk about the training regimen that you will be subjected to during your consumption of this masterpiece. Be warned, excessive exposure to these sequences can lead to severe adrenaline surges and a sudden urge to go into the mountains to train. 
beat Baki who spent 2 months working out 10 hours a day to defeat a giant ape and turning into a muscle bound freak in the process, or Garland who decided to just run an entire mining operation by himself in the middle of the Russian tundra using nothing but his bare hands to excavate rocks, the intensity with which these men pushed our limits will motivate you without fail. Intense. That's the best objective I can find to describe this show. Every character is out of their minds insane, with both workout sessions and fights being taken to the absolute extreme. It's not rare for a character to risk their life for the sake of getting stronger. The best example being Baki who jumped off a freaking cliff to acquire better reflexes. That's going to really help you relativize the struggles you're going through when you decide to skip a workout because you're a little bit tired or because it's raining outside. These are shit excuses and you know it, but seeing how badass the dudes in this show can be and how strong their resolve is will give you more incentive to brush them aside. Never give up, never back down. Those are the series mottos. The only way to have a life worth living is to grab what you want by the balls and never let go. And the only way you'll be able to do that is to become a psycho. I mean, just look at these faces. If you came across someone looking like this on the street, you'd be out of their way in an instant. The facial expressions in this series just scream, I don't have time for defeat. The character's appeal doesn't stop at their physique or incredible work ethic and fighting abilities, however. As the story delves in depth into the psychology of self-improvement and the challenges that a life dedicated to the never-ending pursuit of perfection can create. Baki isn't just a manga about bloody battles and big biceps. It has a surprisingly introspective side to it, and some serious topics like body dysmorphia, depression, and questionings about the meaning of life itself are present although they often get brushed aside by those who fail to recognize the story as anything more than a martial arts series. But for you, who's hearing my words, I recommend you pay close attention to these themes, as they will be extremely relevant in your own bodybuilding journey. The story of Baki and his comrades in arm is an ode to human evolution, written by a man who is deeply in love with both the physical and spiritual aspects of martial arts. That passion permeates every single moment of the story, and he's sure to set your soul on fire. I wanted this particular shonen to be the focus of my first recommendation, because to me, it represents the best of what the genre has to offer. If you like walking out, you'll love Baki, there's no way around it. On top of that, the author offers a very strong anti-steroid message at the end of his second narrative arc, and as a natural bodybuilder who strives to stay on the right path, I can only appreciate this drive towards keeping the pursuit of the perfect body pure. You'll come for the fights and stay for the writing. That's the best way to describe the impact this show is going to have on you. In conclusion, Grappler Baki is self-aware. Itagaki knows that the world he created is crazy and that the men who inhabit it are nothing short of ridiculous. But instead of cowering down and tempering the insanity, he decided to crank it up to a thousand and express the undying dedication he feels towards physical development through his characters and story, making for a universe briming with inspiring personalities and motivating backstories. This is why reading slash watching Grappler Baki will make you want to get jacked, as you will get to experience yourself firsthand if you take my advice. Thanks for listening and have a good day.